Yes. Okay, well, actually, what I told them uh. is, for me, it was one of probably the best works that I've seen in the department so far. Is it? Because I didn't. No, because for me, it was everything that we learn in class yeah. from physical work with your little <laughs> fly story oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, voice work uh -huh. and everything was like in this one play and I think all of you did really well Thank you. Thank and you. it was That's nice. really cool, Andrew. Um, wow. I don't know if you know the answer to this question but of all F of you guys work why did Suki choose Sorrows and Rejoicings? Because it's not a known, it's not a very well known play Maybe. that you know I know. What? I don't know why she might have chosen this, but um, a part of me thinks that it could be because it's relevant. Mm. I mean, such things are always relevant, yeah, it's aren't they? One of the they? newer plays. Yeah, one of the new plays, and it's it's relevant. I mean, if you look at the story that's being told about um, the way that people suffered back then because of the the color of their skin and what that deprived them of, like relationships, love. Um, I think that still applies today because it's not completely gone. No. Racism and no. that sort of thing, you know? Mm. And we see that on campus still. And, yes. and a lot of times I thought to myself, it has a lot of links to open Stellenbosch and yeah. language questions and yeah. stuff that happens at this moment. You know, the whole road statue incident happened. I think that there's, there's a link there as well because it's this youth and revolt in mm. yeah. Becca's character and yeah. the young David. So that is definitely, uh, there's definitely a link there as well. Yeah, and I think the nice thing for me about the play was like, we, we kind of knew something was going to come from you, yeah. but the, the choice that Ethel for you got made to keep you in the silence all the time. Mm. And I don't know if Suki uh, chose to put you there all the time, or was it written into the play that the character was on stage you all know, the time? You know, the character is on stage all the time, but she never enters the room, which is this section over here. So no. she stands and she lingers and she listens to everyone. And then, you know, I think she sort of has her own thoughts about it. Because remember, she's, she represents the rebellious, not rebellious, I wouldn't say rebellious, but mm. she represents that thing of, a new, this is not going to be it for me. It's yeah, be it's, it's a new, per, yeah, yeah, it's a new South Africa, it's a new, yeah. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. um, did you guys like, obviously you could kind of relate to it personally, it, was it easier to get into the characters with what's happening now, like on campus specifically and at UCT? Or did it make it harder or like? Yeah, the, oh, but, well, there are definitely stuff that you can take from. Yes. Definitely. Um, but because of the fact that one has to focus also on, on the older qualities mm. and, and, you know, qualities that you didn't possess. Mm. Mm. So it was quite hard then in that case. Yeah. But for me, mm. it's dual. Oh, it's pretty much a bit of both. For me, I think it was way easier um, in terms of, like, they had to all go to a specific age. Mm. But I sort of stayed, like, 18, and I'm, mm. what, like, I'm only 20, 20 now, turning 21. But um, what I did find that made it easy for me was the fact that I feel like I, my generation so much wants everyone to move forward. And I feel like that is how it made it easy for me to relate to mm. all of this, was that I'm in that generation. So mm. it's like, can we please just move forward? Mm. Can we move on? Now, no. yeah, you get what I'm saying? that is no, that's that's quite interesting for me as well. And now talking about getting into character, I know Francois's work kind of because we've worked together and I've and I've seen him work and and he, it, Francois finds a character easily. I don't know, he eases into stuff quite easily. I don't know if you have experienced it. How was it for the rest of you to also then? Go get to the build the character. We did a lot of improv work. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> of improv work. Improv. Because Cecily Berry, you know, the Cecily Berry yeah. exercises and and yeah, I think quite a lot of improv. Mm. Is that where the soundscape um, choices mm. came from, Cecily Berry? Some of them. Mm. Yeah, not well, very few. Well, we, she, she initially she said she wanted a, a soundscape for this and yeah. we explored, you know, like around the table and mm. going through the text and. No, she decided when she wants to. So we just experimented. I don't think it's a Cecily Berry thing. It was just, she said, you know, She was just like, she wants a soundscape. And yeah. at first it was so daunting want, because yeah. we thought like, yo, what are we going to do? It's How easy to, to make it in a cringe, a, a cringe festival. Because, yes. yeah, it can be so tried. But 
she didn't want to pre-record stuff. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. had to, yeah. everything is, it shouldn't be Add artificial, it should be on stage happening live. And it is not written into the play. No, it's not written into the play. No, and that no, we were so nervous. Choice. <laughs> like, we were so nervous. Oh my word, what are the people going to think of the soundscape? I used to sit and I used to think, oh my word, does this even sound yeah, right? At the beginning it wasn't. At the beginning it wasn't no. even like that. At the beginning it sounded so poop. And then yeah. luckily, yeah. towards like, you know, the... Um, towards the end we started okay let's just commit to this if you're going to do a soundscape let's do it properly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it sounds makes and sense and i i yeah. agree it was done properly okay. then okay. there was one time that suki used a projection she didn't use it again oh and um yeah she didn't try to use a projection again the what tree yeah the it tree was supposed, it was supposed to be at the end as well but because, um, of, but the because of the load shedding and oh, the projector, I see. because they have to, yeah, drop the fly bar and put it on again, so they couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there are so there are two times. Yeah, the first one yes. with the stink good monologue, and the, at the end again, there's not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then what was interesting for me is also, I I've never encountered a Brechtian kind of style in any of Athol Fugo's mm. other pieces, if I'm correct. I'm yeah. trying to think, and for the first time, I've seen a, a lot of Brecht and the alienation e effects being used uh -huh. about time and space totally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, there is the Brecht. Didn't even think haven't you? I didn't even think about it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no I, mm. I definitely agree. Because of the fact she wanted to work with the, the Roman, you know, exile oh, okay, thing. Okay. And you know, putting in the space. It's yeah, I mean, it's, it's a realistic set here, but then we have the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. energy and the sand, and so yeah, it definitely. And I think, yes, no, but I think yeah. it's to not milk the moment because yeah. fear God can be so sentimental. This yeah. play could have easily been and so sentimental. I think sentimental, maybe yeah. I know Suki didn't want to. I'm not. I don't want to say direct, but I know she didn't want to go that direction. So no, it's mm. good yeah. because not I, to be too sentimental. I've I've always, and I think that's why I'm not always that keen on Ethel Fugard mm. is because it can become very sentimental. Yes. It can melt the moment. Um, I think it also, if you have a great cast, it can be a great success because he writes a human experience. And I don't know if you felt that it was easier to get your characters because he gives everything to you by means of the text. He creates a character for you. I, I won't know. lie. It was the, as I know I stay silent all the time, but being silent is not easy. Mm. So in that, I feel like, Yo, what is my character even? Where do I begin? Because I just listen to these people, but you never know what to do or how to show that you understand what's going on or how to respond to what these people are saying because you can't stand there and pull these weird facial expressions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Then becomes, yeah, so active. for me, I feel like this is one of the most difficult things I had to do, remain silent all the time and just like listen to them and, and then react on that and hope that the audience also yeah. realizes that I'm... I'm, I'm thinking things, or I'm understanding things, or maybe things are working in my mind right now. Yeah, it's like we knew, I don't know, I knew that there was something brewing in you, and that something was going to come out. We, I just wasn't I was, sure when. I don't know if it's not, like, because I'm not really involved in drama, but I didn't really expect it until just before it happened. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, yeah, no, I kind of saw that coming two minutes ago. But the whole play, I was like, oh, she's just going to stand there. And then that's going to be <laughs> the end okay. of really? that, you know. I didn't that's very interesting. really expect yeah, it. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. And the other thing I wanted to know is, do you feel that Ethel Fugard wrote a bit of himself into I the play? So. I yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, one of those... I'm scared of stepping over the boundary mm. and oh, asking this question, but I've been thinking about it the whole play. Uh, no, we get a biographical sense here. That, no, yes, that he, man. I don't yeah, I, I, I didn't know his story, too, everything about him, but I think there's definitely a biographical aspect of it. I felt that way from the beginning. I thought, because I read a few things about Ethel, and then when I read the play, I started relating a few things, and I just wondered if he could have secretly been speaking about himself. Yeah. But that is so, it's so a person doesn't really want to say it, because, you know... It, you don't know. You don't know. You want know. to be insulting, or you and, want to make assumptions. And, like, if you read his biographical mm. thing in the front of the foyer, yeah. it's quite interesting. 
because he's really experienced a lot of stuff in his life. He he studied mm. drama, oh no, no, anthropology for a while, yeah. and then and stopped. stopped, and then went. On this he hiking, on a ship and, and he went through Africa. Yeah. So it's this really Very amazing encounter, and then went to the court to work in the court mm -hmm. where he saw a lot of injustice, mm. and then you start noticing mm. why he wrote all the he plays it in, mm. you know, that he wrote. Mm. Got all these experiences. Um, yeah, the other thing you guys now met at all you got. <laughs> um, <laughs> how was that for you? Oh. We didn't know he was coming in. Francia saw him obviously at the beginning of the play. Mm. So luckily I didn't see him before. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise it would have been nerve-wracking. Very daunting. Yeah, like I, because in the prologue I just never felt I see people coming and I saw the grey beard walking on oh. the stairs and I was like, oh my. <laughs> I'm gonna like just go through my words down, <laughs> freeze it again. I don't want to. Did mess that up. make you? I mean, obviously it would have made you more nervous than you mm. ordinarily would, it, have, would be. Did it make you? Um, question the way you're portraying the character that he'd put down on paper and you had to yeah. portray it to an audience mm. like no, it's quite with him being them yeah um, no 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 I won't say like obviously you know we knew he was gonna come and watch and it was difficult at first because you never know what was his vision but I also knew that the writer wrote something and you have to separate that at some time you can't be the exact same vision mm. you had so no, it was obviously daunting and nerve-wracking, but we just got into the moment and did it. <laughs> no, I'm so glad I didn't know that he was... I did, I'm glad that I didn't know what night he was coming. Mm. And to be honest, I didn't even recognize him because I was like, I don't know what this man looks like. I've seen a few pictures of him. But um, I remember we were still playing piano and all of a sudden I see Franjo go, oh, there's Ethel and he just leaves. I'm like, right, I stop end. playing. Because he came on afterwards. He, he came came on afterwards, yeah. yes. But he's such a sweet guy, he said, you know, 